This video is published under the Creative Commons license BY and CSA, which means attribution, non-commercial and share-alike. Third-party material has been used for which the permission is specified explicitly for every diagram, photograph or whatever has been used. Please mention the author as Andreas Pfennig, Products, Environment and Processes, Department of Chemical Engineering, Université de Liège, Belgium. A disclaimer applies. Welcome back to this video series on thermal unit operations. We are still in the section on general considerations, especially on the step constructions. After we have seen in the last videos how a general section can be described and uh, side withdrawals exactly with the composition of that feed in that process at that point can be regarded. We want to generalize that a little bit today by regarding a side stream with an arbitrary composition. But we want to still regard side stream that is applied to a single phase. So it can be a feed to one of the phases in exactly that phase state but at an arbitrary composition. Now one has to discuss that apparently a little bit. This does typically not apply to distillation at least not in binary systems because in a binary system the composition is directly linked to the thermal state to the boiling or dew point con uh, situation of that phase. So asking to add a flow rate exactly to the boiling liquid, but with a different composition, that's simply not possible. So this does not really apply to binary distillation. If you have multi-component distillation, you have more degrees of freedom, you can achieve that, but it doesn't work for binary distillation. So what we have to regard are actually those cases, those processes, where we regard the carrier flow rates that are immiscible in each other. So solvent extraction or absorption, for example. And there, of course, it is quite a typical, a typical case that you have an arbitrary composition of a side feed. For example, to give you just two examples for both of these um, cases. In solvent extraction, you may add a second feed of your extractant, possibly to increase the driving force at that point, to improve mass transfer at that point. Same thing can happen, of course, in absorption. You may add a second feed of washing liquid to your absorption process. So in both cases, you may have a side stream with an arbitrary composition, which may be a pure or almost pure extractant or uh, absorbent. We have learned also something else that we can generalize that in the last video. And that was that we do not have to only to regard side streams as being positive, as being a feed. It can also be a removal, meaning that if we set it up in the balances as a feed stream, and the numerical value just have to be taken as being negative. So a negative feed to the column is just a removal. Of course, that is a special situation again. Why should that have an arbitrary composition and be not exactly of that composition that you find at that point in the process? Well, there are two typical cases that can in principle occur. It will be exceptional cases, I should say. But just to give you two examples, you may withdraw something through a membrane process. And then, of course, what you remove has a different composition as what you find in the process at that point. So there, this may be quite helpful to regard it as a negative feed stream being a withdrawal with an arbitrary composition. The second point is that you possibly regard a vapor liquid process. And what actually happens is then the liquid splits into two phases. And you remove just one of these two liquid phases. Then, of course, that composition of that single demixed liquid phase will be different as compared to the overall composition that you have of the L dot phase, the liquid phase in the, in the process. So in both cases, this may be quite helpful, even if you remove something. Now, if you want to set up balances, we first have to look at a sketch, a schematic sketch, and that looks like this. We have, again, as before, between a general section here and general section here, we have our special situation, which is characterized by this balance plane. So we have a balance plane intersecting our process. And in the first case that we want to regard, we add something, in this case, a feed, a side stream, to the L dot phase. Again, L dot phase can have any arbitrary phase state, liquid gas or whatever, uh, with an arbitrary composition Xs, which can, of course, be zero. We add that to our L dot Xi, and if you are coming from the top, we know the Xi. We need to know, of course, we are, what we are adding, and we would like to know what is leaving, which is actually the L dot prime and the Xo. Since we add only something to the L dot, and we are regarding uh, well theoretical uh, balance plane through our um, 
a process, the g dot doesn't change. Why should it? Also, the y doesn't change. Why should it? So actually, the yo equals the yi, and this is one of the equations determining, so to speak, the one point on the operating lines that we want to regard later. So on that side, the balances are quite simple. What's entering is also exactly what is leaving. On this side, we apparently have to set up the balances to, to solve, for example, for the XO. Now, how does that look like? So let's set up the balances. Well, first of all, I should write down what, what we see directly. We said what we see directly is that the YI equals the YO, or other way around, depending if you start from the top or the bottom. Uh, with your operating line construction. Then for the mixing of the L dot streams with of the L dot stream with the side stream, we can write the balance for the carrier flow rates. So steady state means zero equals what is entering was the L dot plus the S dot minus the L dot prime. That was leaving towards the bottom. We can set up the same balance of course, for the transfer component. So we are now regarding the, what, the, the flow rates of the transfer component, which is the L dot times Xi coming from the top, plus the S dot times Xs coming from the side, minus L dot prime Xo. And we want to solve that for the Xo. How do we do that? Well, as we usually do that, we solve the first equation, the more or less overall balance for one of the flow rates, substitute that in the second equation, solve it. So what do we obtain? We can substitute it, or we can first solve it, L dot prime equals L dot plus S dot, which you may have guessed directly, possibly. Then zero equals L dot Xi plus S dot Xs minus, and now we substitute it, L dot plus S dot times the Xo. And it's now trivial to solve that for the Xo. So Xo equals L dot Xi plus S dot Xs divided by L dot plus S dot. And this is one of the final results. Of course, that equation up here is the first result, so to speak. That defines the starting point of the operating line below that side stream. So, what do we see? How is that to be plotted in the yx diagram, if you want to uh, regard that? So we switch again to the presentation. Of course, we know above we have, we have the slope L dot over G dot. Below we have the slope L dot prime over G dot. Since the L dot prime is larger than the L dot because the S dot has been added, this slope will be steeper than the slope up here. And if you plot that, it looks like that. So we have coming from above, we have the operating line with the slope L dot over G dot at the point where the side uh, stream occurs, which is characterized by Xi. Uh, y o at that point there is a shift in x because the y above and below was identical so it has to be on a vertical line there occurs a shift in the x and from that a second operating line starts with a slope l dot prime over g dot which is steeper than the slope above that's all that can be said at that moment of course some other things are already introduced in this diagram because since we know now we have an operating line with one slope above that side stream and we have an operating line below with a different slope, they have to intersect somewhere. And this is exactly at that point here. The solution is already indicated, but we first have to derive that. So how can we derive that? That's luckily not so difficult, only a little bit tedious. So what do we want to do? We want to set up the operating lines for the operating line above and the operating line for the situation below. How does the situation or how does the operating line look for above? So it's y equals the general operating line, so a general y equals L dot over G dot times the x plus y o. You can look that up. That has been derived already previously. So you take just one point, which is the y, uh, the x i y o divide uh, minus L dot over G dot x uh, xi of course. So you take one point which is the xi yo and then you combine that in this form with a slope l dot over g dot and this characterizes then the absolute term so to speak. We can set up the balance for below same way y equals is just characterized by one point. Of course now it's the l dot prime over g dot 
times x. Plus, now one point of the operating line below is characterized by the yi, but we just learned yi equals yo, so we can write, write yo as well, minus l dot prime over g dot times the corresponding x, and that is the xo. So actually it's xo yi, but this is the same as the yo, so that has already been substituted. And now what we do is just subtract these two equations to obtain zero equals. And now uh, we need to, uh, well, I should first, of course, set the, say the idea. So we are looking for the point of intersection. We want to combine these two equations, and that we want to characterize with the index m. I should mention that before I write it down. So if we, when we want to combine these two equations by subtracting them. So we take the top equation minus the bottom equation. If we do that, we get... Well, y minus y, at the point of intersection, both is y m, actually it's zero. Now, l dot over g dot times x m. This is this term, minus that term. Minus l dot prime over g dot, again x m. Plus, well, these two cancel as well, y o minus y o is zero, so minus this plus that minus l dot over g dot, and this is a dedicated x, so it's an xi, plus the l dot prime over g dot times xo. And now we simply have to substitute all these things that we, that we know. We know that the l dot prime equals l dot plus s dot, and the xo is still visible up here, so we can substitute that as well. So 0 equals l dot over g dot xm minus l dot plus s dot, that is substituted for the l dot prime, divided by g dot, xm, minus, now it's the l dot over g dot, xi, plus, again, again substitute l dot plus s dot for the l dot prime, divided by g dot, and now we have to substitute the xo, which is still visible up here, which is the l dot xi plus s dot xs divided by l dot plus s dot. Well, the first thing that we realize is that this l dot plus s dot cancels with that. The next thing we realize is that now all terms are divided by the g dot, which can thus just multiply by the g dot. Uh, and let's just write it down. I always say better copy it once uh, too often uh, than doing some error by some doing in, in, your, in your mind. So it's an l dot xm minus l dot xm minus s dot xm, and this minus is one that you could have overlooked if you didn't spell it out step by step, for example, minus the l dot xi plus, so this g dot is now multiplied, so it's just these two terms, so it's plus l dot xi plus s dot xs. And we again realize that certain terms cancel because here the um, L dot xm has a positive and a negative sign, and here the L dot xi has a positive and a negative sign. So we can say this cancels with that, and that cancels with that. The two last terms both contain the s dot, which is a non-zero value, so we can divide by s dot. And then we realize that minus xm plus xs has to be zero, which in turn means that the xm is now defined, xm equals xs. And we can now, of course, substitute this xm into one of the uh, operating lines that we have written above. I don't repeat them, I just dire directly write the solution, so to speak. Uh, it is ym equals yo minus l dot over g dot times xi minus xs, slightly rearranged, but that is, so to speak, the um, balance line uh, solved for, the, uh, for this ym. So that allows us to determine the um, xm, ym coordinates, and now what does that help us? What is that for? What's that good for?
Well, on the one hand side, we have now this operating line typically coming from the top. That's the assumption. You can do the same the other way around, then you possibly need to solve the equations a little bit differently, but since you know them, you can do that. Let's regard that coming from the top. So we know this operating line. We know that at that point we have our, at this point here is the, characterized by the xi and y o, which we obtained, for example, by a step construction. We know that after, I don't know, five theoretical stages from the top, we have our side feed. So we determine with the steps this point, and then we know here something happens. There's a horizontal change, a horizontal shift in x composition. And now we are able to determine that because we know it's only horizontal, so it's happening on a horizontal line. We are able to determine the XO that we have done already. And we know that the second point of this second operating line is actually, if you extend this first operating line and look for the intersection at XS, this is also the point where the second operating line below the side stream has to pass through. So this point and that point are then fixed and you can plot the second operating line and regard the steps of your process across that, that side stream. With that, most of everything has been said already. The only thing that needs to be derived is this level rule. Of course, you realize that we are adding the, X, the flow rate with the xi and that with the xs, the side stream, to obtain the L dot prime with the xo towards the bottom. So it's a mixing process, so the level rule has to apply. Nevertheless, let's briefly re uh, derive that because it's just two lines more or less. The balance that we had set up already above was at a certain point L dot xi plus s dot xs, we just copy from above, equals L dot plus s dot times xo. That was directly uh, below substituting this term for the L dot prime, so that's that situation. That's where we took that equation from. Now we have to solve that for, well, actually we want to relate the two flow rates, so we have to separate the two flow rates. So it's L dot xi plus s dot xs equals L dot xo plus s dot xo. Then we separate the two flow rates, L dot times xi minus xo coming from the right side of the equation, equals s dot times xo minus the xs coming from the left side of the equation. Now we can determine the ratio of the flow rates, for example, l dot over s dot, and that equals apparently uh, xo, that's the wrong way around, no problem. So I solved it actually in the script for s dot over l dot, which is not a real problem anyway which is, of course, xi minus xo divided by xo minus xs. And you want to call that a over b. If I would have solved it the other way around, it would have been, been b over a. But this way corresponds better to the, to the diagram, so I rewrote that. And if you look there at that, we see that the differences in the axis correspond to the a and the b, this xo minus xs to the b, and the xi minus xo to the a. So we again have the level rule, as we would have expected. That way everything has been said. Well, almost everything. The last thing I should mention is, of course, in the example I mentioned that the uh, stream that you add could be pure carrier component, pure extractant, or pure washing liquid in absorption, which just means that the xs is zero, so that that point of intersection is on the y-axis of the diagram. But that's the only special thing. On, other, on the other hand side, of course, the more x or more s dot you add, the more this point will shift to the left, as expected from, from the level rule. But that's quite natural the interpretation of the level rule. So this was addition of a feed or actually a side stream, it could also be negative, could be a removal as discussed to the L-dot stream, to the dedicated phase, the L-dot stream in this case. Of course we can do the opposite, we can add it to the G-dot stream and that in the overview looks like that. We again have our control uh, plane, where we now have the L-dot passing through without change, so xi equals xo, or other way around, xo equals xi, and we just add something to the G-dot stream, so we have the G-dot stream the g dot prime stream above, uh, be below, adding the s dot to get the g dot above. Again, we have an operating line here, an operating line there. 
we can already say something about the slopes. L dot over G dot here. Here we see that actually the G dot plus the S dot equals the G dot. So G dot is larger than the G dot prime. G dot prime is thus smaller than the G dot, which means that the L dot over G dot prime, which is smaller than that, since it's a denominator, this slope below is again steeper than the slope above. So again, we have a slope of an operating line below that side stream, which is steeper than the slope of the operating line above. Again, we have to set up the balances. And for the very first balances, I would like uh, to, to, to state that, because that uh, from that we want to do that is used to determine that one point of the of the uh, operating line. So we are now adding something to the G dot stream. How do we set up the balances? Well, let me first of all again write down what I wrote above as well. The xi equals the xo. So nothing is done to the L dot stream, so all, there also the composition doesn't change. Then we have the overall uh, balance of or the carrier flow rates. It's zero steady state equals uh, G dot entering from G dot prime entering from below plus the S dot from the side minus leaving is the G dot stream. And of course the same with the corresponding loads. So zero equals G dot prime yi plus s dot ys minus g dot yo. Now we want to solve that and we solve it again in the typical case if you want to come from the top we know the g dot but we don't know the g dot prime so we want to solve it for the g dot prime and substitute that in the lower equation and then solve uh, for the yi which is the corresponding composition. So if we solve that for the g dot prime, we obtain g dot prime equals g dot minus s dot. One can directly say something about this negative sign because that will occur throughout the other equation that will follow as well. What we're actually mixing is the g dot prime and the s dot to obtain the g dot. And what this equation rather says is that you demix the g dot with the s dot to obtain the g dot prime. So it's a virtual demixing actually expressing that you have to add the g dot prime and the s dot to obtain the g dot because it's a demixing this is a negative sign over here. If we substitute that what do we obtain? Zero equals we directly can substitute g dot minus s dot times yi plus s dot ys minus g dot uh, yo and you want to solve that for the yi because from coming from the top, that is the unknown variable. So yi equals, and that's quite trivial now, it's s dot ys minus g dot yo. And then you see again this demixing divided by s dot minus g dot. So both are, uh, have this neg negative sign because we are virtually demixing these two flow rates. So this is the equation describing the yi below if you come from the top and this relates to the x for the axis so that we know that point of uh, starting point of the operating line as well. Everything else is more or less similar to what we have been discussing before for the uh, side stream to the uh, L dot stream but only switched so to speak the y and g, the y composition and the g dot flow rates with the x composition and the L-dot flow rates. And if you plot that in the diagram, it looks like that. We have our, op our operating line from above with a certain number of theoretical stages. And at a certain point, we want to have our side feed, for example, to the G-dot, where we know if we take a negative value, it will be a side withdrawal. Where we have our feed in this case that we want to regard, there we have, so we know this composition, then we are able to obtain our yi. It has to happen in this case on a vertical line, so just the axis switched, so to speak, as to compared to before. So on a vertical axis now we are able to determine the yi. We know that the x doesn't change, so it has to be on a vertical line, we know that point. Of course, if you go through the same derivation of the intersection of the operating line here with the l dot over g dot, and the second operating line below is the L of a G dot prime, where we know that this slope is steeper than the slope above. Then they have to intersect. And if you go through the same solving of the operating lines, 
we find our point of intersection now, just the axis exchanged at the ys. So you plot this operating line, plot this ys. You know that, that's the composition of your side stream. You should know that. It could be zero as well, if you like. So there you have your point of intersection. And that will be one point of the operating line uh, below the side stream. You know already, already this point, so you are able to plot that operating line. And again, if you solve the corresponding balances, you get this A over B. So this difference over that difference. So it's a mixing or demixing de again, where we have formulated it in the previous equations that I wrote down as a demixing. But of course, it's also a mixing. If you uh, mix the yi and the ys, you will obtain your yo. So coming from the bottom, regarded from the bottom, so to speak, you have a mixing which is, if you regard mixing, the more natural case. Okay, so that way we are able to plot the operating lines. And of course, if you are coming from the bottom, you have to rearrange the, the, the equations a little bit differently. You, you would then have to solve for the yo, but since you know how it works for the yi, just solving for the other variable is not that difficult. So we know how to op obtain that. We get one point of intersection of the operating lines and a jump vertically or horizontally, depending if we add something to the g dot or to the L dot stream. With that, we can sub, uh, summarize, formulate a take home message. The side streams to either dedicated phase with an arbitrary composition lead to operating lines that meet at exactly that composition of that feed. That's what we have seen. So at the point where actually the, the addition or removal occurs, we have a jump in composition, but they nevertheless meet at that composition uh, of the side stream. Okay, with that I would like to say thank you and I hope to see you again in the next video.